About a billion years or so ago, when time was young, our Earth was a lonely, barren world. Nothing grew on the land. Few things grew in the sea. No bird song broke the stillness. The wind cried. The storm spoke. And within the earth, violent forces were at work, contesting, molding, preparing for time to come. Beneath the earth's thin, constantly changing crust, molten rock flowed and burned under tremendous heat and pressure, striving to find release. When the crust was torn by subterranean upheaval, molten rock spewed upward. In time, millions of years of time, the molten rock in these crevasses cooled and hardened. Then the hardened rock itself was beset by further disturbances that often left it heavily fissured. Theory says that through these fissures flowed hot mineral-bearing waters and gases, and as the Earth spun off more millions of years, they crystallized, and in so doing, form the most unusual and useful mineral fiber known to man. Largely unseen, seldom recognized, it has played a tremendously important role in the improvement of our standard of living. As you might expect, the Greeks had a name for it. They called it the unquenchable, indestructible stone. They called it asbestos. Unaffected by fire, Unchanged by weather, untouched by time's dark captains, rust, rot, and decay, asbestos possesses rare qualities for which it stands alone. So fine are the individual asbestos fibers that it is only through the eye of the powerful electron microscope that they can be properly studied. Even when magnified 31,000 times, they appear delicate, gracefully hiding the fact that they are incredibly strong, stronger than many types of steel wire of the same thickness. At the same time, they are remarkably flexible and highly resistant to most chemicals. Man has never been able to duplicate their fibrous properties for commercial use. The most commercially useful variety of asbestos, called chrysotile, has been found in widely separated parts of the world. Only Canada, Africa, and Russia have abundant quantities. Less common types of asbestos, such as chrysotile and amosite, are mined mainly in Africa. The world's largest asbestos mine is the Jeffrey Mine at Asbestos, Quebec, so named for nature's magic mineral. Most deposits have a 10 to 25 year life, but this one has been yielding for more than half a century. And even under the pressure of growing demands, it is expected to produce for another 100 years. The more than 500,000 tons of top grade chrysotile fiber extracted yearly provide nearly a third of the world's total supply. The mining methods used in the vast open pit portion of this mine are typical of modern surface mining operations practically everywhere. By drilling and blasting and digging, it has grown.
But pit mining is not the only means of extracting asbestos-bearing ore from its deposits. Another productive way is called block caving. In open pit mining, the asbestos ore is removed from the top of the deposit. In block caving, the ore is taken from underground. As practiced here, each section to be caved is 200 feet square by 400 feet high. Some distance away, a main shaft is sunk from the surface to a depth below the area to be caved. From the main shaft, a tunnel called the haulage drift is driven in the direction of the section to be caved. Then other tunnels called cross cuts are driven under the area to be caved and at right angles to the haulage drift. The cross cuts and the haulage drift form a network of underground arteries, much like the streets of a city. Through them run the mine cars. Now another system of tunnels called slusher drifts are driven directly below the section to be caved, above and at right angles to the cross cuts. The floors, walls and roofs of all slusher drifts are heavily reinforced with concrete. Through the roof of the slusher drifts, draw points 17 feet apart are pushed up into the section to be caved. The ore body above the draw points is now drilled and blasted and the asbestos laden rock tumbles down through the draw points to the floor of the slusher drift. Now the crab like slusher drags it to a point over a cross cut where it falls into the 10 ton mine cars waiting below. The beginning of a long journey. Now crude ore, soon useful asbestos fiber. All traffic is controlled by a central dispatcher through two-way radio and an electric signal system. At the tipple near the main shaft, the cars are dumped two at a time. The ore roars down a giant chute to the primary crusher on a lower level and the crude asbestos rock gets its first treatment underground. From the crusher, it will go downward into bins and then a loading pocket from where it'll be hoisted in 12 and a half ton mouthfuls by fast moving skip buckets that shoot it to the surface. Working underground, the miners utilize the most advanced mining methods using fast boring drills. In their many different jobs, they are protected and guided by the highest safety standards. Light, power, ventilation, structure, all are important in the daily production of thousands of tons of ore. All are important in protecting the men who do the block caving.